Well, hello, my friends. Blessing and peace on you in the mighty name of King Jesus. Troy Brewer here coming at you strong from, Re not, not actually from Redemption Ranch, actually from Third Stage Ranch in Glen Rose, Texas. Friends, you know, the Bible declares, and I love this word. You're going to love this. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork day in the day utter speech and night in the night it reveals knowledge. And there is no language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. And in them, he has set a tabernacle for the son, which is the bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoicing as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the ends of the heavens and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. As Psalms 19. And then, of course, Genesis chapter 1, verse 14 says, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for, year, and, and for years. Well, friends, I am so glad to be joining you here today, guys. We've been looking forward to this day for years. And like, okay, man, we know that this prophetic sign is a big deal. This is no ordinary eclipse. And by the time that you get through watching this here over the next 20 or 30 minutes or so, a couple of things is going to happen. One is you're going to know that God is speaking. You're going to know that God loves Israel. You're going to know that this is a word for the United States of America. And you're also going to see it go dark outside. The eclipse has already started here. Um, Glen Rose, Texas is, I don't know, it's about an hour and 15 minutes or so southwest of Fort Worth, Texas. And I have a ranch out here and I'm actually in the top of my barn right now. And my son has helped me set all this up. And I have a team of people at Open Door Church that are on the other end of that. And then, of course, you're uh, someplace watching this. And you know what? So many of you have already chimed in and told us where it is that you're watching from. Hey, would you continue to do that? Would you please comment and like this and subscribe if you haven't already subs uh, if you haven't already subscribed? And I'd like to also say a great big boom and hello to all my friends that are watching on ODX.TV. Outstanding. Okay, I am ready to get off into this because this is such a great word. I've got two computers here. I've got a ton of notes here. I've got my phone and I am ready to rock and roll. I probably ought to actually mute these things. Let me see if I can figure out how to mute this thing. I think I have. I think this one here is muted. Yay, I'm so grown up. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Friends, I'm going to start off here uh, just talking to you about, first of all, I know that many of you already know that God does indeed speak through the heavens. He does. And Jesus himself said in Luke chapter 21, there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and also within the stars. Jesus said that. And he said that in present tense, but he also said that in present future tense. And he was speaking into the day that you and I are actually into today because he knew that there would be critics like, oh, that ain't nothing. That's just an that's just some kind of a, a coincidental thing that happens in the heavens. It is not coincidental. It is not. I promise you, friends, as a matter of fact, the word of God says, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. And then when he says, let them be for signs and for seasons and days and for years, there's several different things within that verse that is so revealing prophetically. And uh, the first thing I would say is this, is that the reality of the solar eclipse that is happening right now over the great free state of Texas uh, is actually a miracle. Like, what are you talking about? Those happens on that, that happens on every planet and every solar system. No, it doesn't. I don't imagine it happens anywhere, anywhere else except for here. And you're like, why? Because, see, when God created the sun and the moon and the stars, he placed them in our firmament. Like, what does that mean? That means that he literally placed them with our perspective and our point of view in mind. So God Almighty created the sun to be 400 times bigger than the moon. And he created the sun to be 400 times further away than the moon from our perspective. So that when they come together, about the size of a quarter, and those two quarters come together from our perspective, they come together perfectly. The timing of that and the calendar of that cannot be ignored. And of course, you and I are not ignoring it today. We have literally thousands of people all over the planet Earth that are watching this. And I would imagine that now that by now you've like, OK, the timing of this, 
which was set up whenever God Almighty created the universe, he also knew that it would be one day after the worldwide um, declaration and call for bloodshed and jihad all over the planet Earth. And he also knew that it would be seven days to the day that Israel was attacked and entered into multiple fronts of a brand new war. Oh, my goodness. Friends, the heavens declare the glory of God. And you're going to love what this is actually saying. So whenever God Almighty speaks in the heavens and whenever the Lord declares a word um, from from the heavens, it's important that you understand if this is a solar event, it means that he's speaking to the nations. If this is a lunar event, it means that he's speaking to his covenant people. So either the bride of Christ or the nation of Israel. And if this is indeed a star event, something that's happening within the stars, he's speaking to his children of covenant. Now, if you've been through any of my teachings on that, you know that I, I like to teach a whole lot upon those things. And I'm not going to do that here today because, because the message in this is so powerful and it's so incredible. But you do need to know that the sun is always seen as masculine. And again, it is always a word for the nations. Well, this is the shadow of this of this of this great eclipse is only coming across the United States. It comes from the ocean and it leaves into the Gulf of Mexico. And it's like, okay, what does that mean? That means that this is a word and a warning to the American people first and foremost. Now, since everybody can see the sun, uh, it's a word for everybody, but you need to know that when God speaks through the sun, it's always a national word. And friends, I'm going to tell you, this is indeed a word that is to this nation, and it is a word to the United States. You know, whenever we said Psalms 19, we said um, that God Almighty has placed the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber. Again, that's it's masculine, and it's a general word for the nations, On the or it's also speaking concerning the Gregorian calendar. So the Gregorian calendar it represents, you know, the sun and the prophetic marker is the sun. On the Hebrew calendar, it, the prophetic marker is the moon. This speaks of our calendar. This speaks to Gentile people and it actually speaks um, concerning our calendar. Friends, this goes all the way back to the sign of Jonah. Now, a lot of people, one of the layers of revelation that goes with the sign of Jonah is, of course, Jonah was in the belly of the fish that God had prepared. So God created this special sea monster specifically for Jonah. And he was in the belly of that fish for three days and then he came out. And there's a resurrection promise that is within that. But that's not the only one. The, the other sign or the main or the, the one that was most recognized, the one, the one that the Hebrews understood at the time of Jesus, whenever Jesus said, no sign will be given to you except for that of Jonah the prophet. Boom. They knew what that was. I was like, okay, what is that? That is a solar eclipse. Guys, you, if you were to get onto modern day um, astronomical software, you could literally go back and you could look at the great Assyrian eclipse that happened in 763 BC. And the day that Jonah walked into Nineveh and said, you cats have got 40 days and it's over. They listened and they didn't recognize that on the Hebrew calendar, it was the first of Elul. And 40 days later was the day of atonement or the day of judgment. They didn't recognize that calendar. What they did recognize is, boom, he walked in at the apex of a solar eclipse. And they knew that that was an omen. They knew that that was a warning. They knew they had better get some things right concerning their nation. And so you know what they did? They repented. And even though God Almighty had said certain destruction is going to happen, it didn't happen. And it actually made Jonah mad, which is really funny to me. Uh, he really wanted to see those jokers pay for what they'd done. And I don't blame him. But is it is typically a word of repentance. And by the way, that sign of Jonah that uh, came over in 760, 763 BC, Nineveh is modern day Mosul. And when you see Mosul, Iraq on the news, uh, you're talking about Nineveh. You can see the new, you can see, actually see the ruins of Nineveh there. Yeah, that's amazing to me. So today, you and I are experiencing the same exact thing. And I have to tell you that this thing is actually called a ring of fire. A ring of fire. Like that must mean Johnny Cash. No, it doesn't mean Johnny Cash. Let me tell you what it actually means. It means covenant, a ring of fire does, but it specifically speaks a circle of fire. And when you look up here in just a few minutes here, whenever this thing is apex, 
it's going to be a ring of fire. And the reason why that happens is because sometimes the moon is a little bit further away than it is closer to us, which means the sun is a tiny bit bigger than the moon. And that means there's literally a ring all the way around it, a ring of fire. It's absolutely incredible. And you can see right here, guys, that speaks of covenant. And guys, everything, the numbers, the date, how long, um, how long the apex is, how uh, where it enters the United States, where it exits the United States, all of that is a great word from the Lord. Okay. Zechariah had a vision of his own measuring line. And this is what he said in Zechariah 2 verse 5. God said this. He says, I, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire all around her, and I will be the glory in the midst of her. Okay, that is Zechariah 2, 5, and I'm so excited about that because Zechariah 8 is where it says that Israel is the apple of, of God's eye. And friends, seven days ago, Israel had Israel was attacked in a way that was so horrible and so personal, and don't think for one second that King Jesus did not see it. He had already, he had already ordained from the heavens that he was going to give a word, a prophetic declaration, which opens a portal. It opens a door in heaven and something is released. Something is being released right now as the as, as God Almighty demonstrates that he will indeed overshadow his people. Now, if y'all ever do a study and you're like, okay, sometimes God is in front of us. Sometimes God is behind us. Sometimes God is beside us. Sometimes he's all the way around us. Sometimes we stand on him and sometimes he overshadows us. That literally means God says, I'll take it from here. I've got this. I will overshadow you. I will be bigger than the event that is actually taking place. The Lord is declaring that right now. And I am so excited about it. Um, yesterday, uh, whenever we were looking at the news, we've been very involved in all the mess that's going on in Israel. We actually have rescuers that are there that are working with the Israeli government uh, we have we have food banks, we have uh, bomb shelters, and you can imagine that it's been it's been a very busy week for us. Now that I've said all that, one of the things that's come out in the news. Do you know what they call? Do you know what? Do you know what the 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 campaign of God's enemies, Hamas, Hez, uh, Hezbollah, and the Syrian knuckleheads that are also after exterminating the Jewish people? and an unprecedented kind of genocide, which has happened throughout all the centuries. Uh, this thing is actually called, are you ready? It's called the ring of fire. That's what they're calling it, is the ring of fire. They named it that. The enemies that are now surrounding Israel, the, the term for the unholy trinity of, of, of those three is actually called the ring of fire. Well, God has answered in the heavens today. He's answered with his own ring of fire. Listen, friends, to what uh, Psalms chapter 2, verses 1 through 4 says. It says, it says, why do the heathen rage? Yesterday was a worldwide day of rage, as uh, exclaimed by the radicals and the enemies of God Almighty and freedom-loving people and also the Jewish people. They said it's a day of rage worldwide. Well, you know how God answers that? Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. And this is what they say. Let us break the bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. That's the first word I want to ask you guys to hang on to. And you need to know that there is a sign in the heavens today that is indeed God's answer to a ring of fire his own ring of fire. Now, two years ago, I came out here to this very barn here, here in Glen Rose, Texas. I came out here to this very barn. It was, it was early in the morning. And the reason why I came out before the sun came up, because there was the planetary parade that was taking place within the heavens. And I was amazed at it. We were all amazed at it. And I was indeed wondering, I wonder what incredible thing, man, that the Lord is going to do today. And so the planetary parade is when it's in the sequence that you can see from in, in your firmament or from your point of, of vision, I can see, okay, look, you know what? There's Mercury, there's Venus. Hey, look, man, there's the moon. And after that is Jupiter. And after that is uh, Saturn. And oh my gosh, those things are imperfectly lined up. And that's amazing. And then of course the sun came up right, uh, right behind Venus or, or Mercury. And I was like, wow. And I was like, Lord, 
You're showing off in the heavens today, and it's so amazing. And Lord, I don't know what great thing you're going to do today, but I bless it. I bless it. I bless it. I want to line up with that. I line up with that. Your people cry out. The heavens have declared. I came into this barn, and I have a TV in here. I turned on the news, and Bo, and boom, Roe v. Wade was overturned that day. Like, what? You're like, Yes. On the day that Roe v. Wade was overturned in the United States of America, after 50 years of abortion here, God Almighty answered with a sign from the heavens, and he did what nobody thought was possible. Nobody thought that that was possible, and it happened in one day. What was that? It was a sign in the heavens. Absolutely incredible. Well, today is also a sign in the heavens, and I'm so blown away at it. And again, seven days after. Uh, this war. So God is answering with his own ring of fire. And he says, I will laugh from heaven. That's what he's going to do. All right. I'm going to show you today is the day, October the 14th and the number 10. So if we look at 10, 14, the number 10 is a number that means perfect order. And it's when God shows up and says, there's a new sheriff in town. Okay. It's when, it's when God answers uh, with 10 plagues. It's when God answers with 10 commandments. It means perfect order. It means when something is out of its lane and he puts it back into the correct lane, he likes to stamp the number 10 on it. And then the number 14 is a number that represents generational promises. These words, like these numbers in the Bible, the Bible says in the book of Matthew that there are 14 generations from Abraham to David, 14 generations from David to the carrying away of Babylon, and 14 generations from the carrying away of Babylon unto Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is a 77th from Adam. He's a 77th generation from Adam. So he's got 14, 14, 14, boom. What is that? It's generational promises. So the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 9 through 16. On this 14th day, while there is a sign in the heavens, he says, therefore, know that the Lord, your God, he is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant, ring of fire, mercy, the uh, ring of fire, a ring. And he also keeps mercy. And then he says this for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. And he repays those who hate him to their face to destroy him. Um. Hezbollah, um, worldwide knuckleheads, haters of God, you need to know that the Lord answers this mess. And he is making a declaration today on the 14th day. Uh, you know, Hamas, which is a Hebrew word, which means violence. And it's used in the book of Genesis where it says, and violence covered the earth. So God wiped them out. Well, that's their name. And I should say that it is prophetic. And the Lord sees Israel. The Lord saw what happened this last week, and he sees what is happening right now. And my friends in Israel, you need to know that God Almighty has not forgotten you. He has not forgotten you, and he will remember his covenant. Again, a ring of fire. Well, for all of us that are here, all of us Gentile folks who live in the United States, let's pay attention to where the shadow begins to touch us. It touches us at a place called Gardenier, Oregon. Garden near Oregon is where this has begun. And what does that speak of? It speaks of the garden. It speaks of, and by the way, you know, Oregon has a, has a sun and has an eclipse on their flag. Like, okay, well, let's pay attention to this. Okay. So God comes into the place that is called the garden. And then he leaves, the shadow will leave at a place called Corpus Christi. Friends, you know what Corpus Christi means? It means the body of Christ. So again, this is a word to this nation, and it's about the importance of those who walk intimately with the Lord and have dominion, kingdom people who have dominion, the garden, right? That place of prayer, can you not tarry with me for one hour, which was in the garden, that incredible place, and he's speaking specifically to the body of Christ. Well, if I'm going to look at that, one of the first things that I'd like to say is this, it means intimacy with the Lord and personally knowing the Lord, but a garden also represents a guarded place, a walled place. And it speaks to us and it says this, number one, you and I need to know how to seek the Lord and how to find him today. He's inviting you in, in a whole new way. He wants to overshadow you is, is exactly what he wants to do. 
Now you also need to know that he is saying, be on guard. Why should we be on guard? Because the same people that came into Israel to attack and to kill the women and the children and the vulnerable men and sit there and just went door to door to door while people hid and waited for over seven hours and nobody showed up. Those same people are coming over our own borders and they are here among us right now. Do not think for one second that what has happened in Israel cannot happen to us. It can happen to us. This is why it's so important for those who are overshadowed by the Lord, for those people who know King Jesus, for those people who walk with him in the garden, for those people who are of the body of Christ. Guys, our words, our prayers, our declaration, it's how we seek him and how we find him and how we are watchmen on the wall for our own nation and for the people of Israel is more important now than it has ever, ever, ever been. The timing of this is incredible. Not just the date, it being the 14th day and 14 mean generation, being generational promises. Every single, you know, there's, there's 24,000 miles that circle our globe, which means there's 24 time zones, you know, things that circle the throne in heaven, right? The 24 elders, uh, 24 is a number that represents full circle or it represents the full circumference. Okay. The reason why I'm throwing that out there to you is because no matter where you're watching this at in the world, and I can see that there's people from nations all over the world that are watching right now, um, it doesn't matter what time it is where you're watching this at. The universal time, the universal time coordinating, which is the UTC, this thing begins at 1616 UTC time. And like, what is that? 16 is a number that represents the love of God. Yeah, there are 16 Jehovah titles of God. In 1 Corinthians 13, where it lists the, the, all the attributes of the love of God, love is kind, love is patient, all 16 of those. There are 16 of those attributes. The 16th president of the United States is Abraham Lincoln. And what greater love hath no man than this, than that he laid down his life for his friends. Guys, this, this shadow starts at the love of God. And it's a double declaration, 16, 16. My goodness, that is a word. Do you know what John 16, 16 says? It says, just a little while, and then you will not see me. And again, a little while, and then you will see me because I go to the Father. Jesus is coming back soon. It's not pie in the sky. It's not some weirdo lunatic fringe of Christianity. Listen, he promised for 4,000 years he would show up the first time. He's been promising for 2,000 years he would show up the second time. The heavens declare the glory of God in friends. Jesus is coming soon. <laughs> you know what Romans 16, 16 says? It says, greet one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ greet you. So again, there it is, the love of God. This is the word for the timing of this. So this is also a word of unity. Eclipses are also about unity. Eclipses are also about alignment. And there is a, a call in the body of King Jesus for you and I to be aligned with Christ today. So I already told you as it goes over, it starts there uh, in Gardner. It goes over Crater Lake. It goes over Albuquerque. It goes over Roswell. It goes over Odessa. It goes over Midland. And then it goes over San Antonio, Texas. And then, of course, it, it leaves and it, exits, and it exits Corpus Christi. When it exits Corpus Christi, the ring of fire ends at noon. And uh, what is that? It's 12 o'clock. And what is that? It is God's perfect government. 12 is a number that represents the government of God, right? There's 12 disciples. There's 12 tribes of Israel. Right on. You got, there's a million 12s, right? So I'm, I'm not going to go off into that. But specifically, the duration of eclipse over Corpus Christi, the duration of that, that great ring of fire is four minutes and 53 seconds. Friends, here comes the promise for Israel. In Genesis chapter 45, verse 3, Joseph the dreamer, the prophetic brother that he was, he says to his brothers, I am Joseph. And the, and the Bible says his brothers couldn't answer him because they were just, they were dismayed at his presence. They didn't even know how to process the fact that Joseph was still alive. Guys, this speaks of the second coming of the Lord to Israel because Joseph will be revealed to his brethren. I promise you. You know, whenever whenever Joseph took off his Egyptian wig and 
he wiped off his Egyptian makeup and he started speaking Hebrew. Those Jewish brothers were so blown away and they were like, we had no idea. And he's like, I know, but I'm not here for your harm. I'm here for your good. Guys, the duration of the eclipse over the body of Christ, Corpus Christi, is four hours and 53 minutes. And the verse I just gave you is Genesis 45, verse 3. And the day is coming soon and very soon, my friends. <laughs> As a matter of fact, this whole thing actually speaks to me of revival in Israel. It speaks to me that the American church needs to support the Messianic churches in Israel with a holy kiss and that we need to be prepared for revival to take place there. You know, all of Israel is mourning and all of Israel is broken right now. And this is a time for the power of the Holy Spirit to come in and to comfort our brothers and sisters that are over there. And you know what's going to happen? Jesus will be revealed to his brothers. And they're going to say, we thought you were an American thing. We thought you were an Italian thing. We thought we had no idea you were our brother. And he's like, yes, Joseph will be revealed to his brothers. Another great uh, 45 verse three scripture with the duration of the eclipse being over Corpus Christi for four hours and 53 minutes is this Isaiah 45 verse three. I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I, the Lord, who call you by name, I am the God of Israel. Well, friends, when I see that, I see that God Almighty is about to put his stamp on what is taking place in Israel and remind not just the, the Israelis, but also to remind the world, no, no, this one here belongs to me. So there is a warning for the body of Christ across America. Jesus is about to unveil himself to his brothers. He's coming back with justice for some. He's coming back for judgment for others, and we had better be aligned in the right place. Okay. Hallelujah. How'd that do, Ben? Friends all over the planet Earth, I that's that's my word. And there's other notes that I have and other things that I could tell you, but the bottom line is that this is a word of repentance for the American church. If you haven't been involved in the kingdom, it's time for you to be a kingdom person. If you haven't been supporting Israel, it's time for you to support Israel. If you haven't been standing with King Jesus in the day, in this woke day that you and I are living in today, know the word of God and fear God more than you fear anybody else. I encourage you guys to do that. Um, this is also going to point us to the great eclipse that's going to happen next year because I cannot talk to you about this eclipse without me reminding you that on August the 21st of 2017, we had the first great American eclipse since the year 1776. Very much an American word. And it came across there. It also came across Oregon. It, it started in Salem, Oregon, and then it left at Fort Sumter where the Civil War began. And it split our nation right down the middle. And he's like, if you guys do not get your act together, uh, there is going to be a great civil war here within the United States. And that happened in 2017. It also marked the beginning of a seven-year period. Why? Because the next great of American eclipse is now. And again, it hadn't happened since 1776. And then there is this monster eclipse that is going to take place again next year. And it's going to happen just a few months from now. And it's going to be on April the 8th of 2024. And whenever it's going to go right over us, where I'm at right now, hallelujah, and he's going to overshadow us. And whenever this eclipse does go over, it starts at Eagle Pass. And that speaks, I mean, my gosh, that, that speaks to the rapture of the church. The Bible says in Luke 17, verse, 30, uh, verse 37, and they answered to him and said, where, Lord? And so he said to them, wherever the body is, Corpus Christi, there the eagles will be gathered together. What? Yes, that's what it is. And you know what? It actually puts an X in Hebrew, which means a sign over the United States from the first eclipse to the second eclipse. Now, what's interesting is the first eclipse that took place, it actually went over a place. And I'm so excited. There's thousands and thousands of people watching. When it, when it went over the United States, it went over seven cities called Salem. Okay, that speaks to me of seven years of peace. It went over seven cities called Salem. And then this next one, which happens April 8th, Passover. Passover 
this thing is going to pass over us on April the 8th. And it crosses over the same path, of course. And when you look at the place where it crosses over, I got with my team and that left place right there is called Little Egypt. Remember, what is that all about? It's all about Joseph. Seven years of plenty, seven years of lack. It's all about the dreamer. It's about revival. It's about um, knowing how to be provided for, how to be protected, and how to have provision in the midst of a crazy world. And knowing how to reveal that to your brothers. All right. So then where it crosses at in a place that's called Little Egypt, we looked it up and we said, hey, where exactly does it cross at? So here's the first picture. We're like, OK, all right. Well, that's kind of cool. It's right by Cedar Lake. And that tells us about, you know, the Cedars of Lebanon. That's that's royalty. That's all those kinds of things. But then I said, no, no, I want to know the square foot where this thing crosses. And guys, when I looked it up on the square foot, I want to show you what it is. It is a street that's called Salem. I kid you not. <laughs> Whenever I sell that, my mind was so blown. And I was like, okay, what is Salem? Salem is Shalom. Guys, today is Shabbat. So Shabbat Shalom. Salem is the peace that is found on the other side of war. It's the peace that is found on the other side of hardship. It's when the enemy is eliminated and when the spirit of God rules and reigns. It's the seventh day. All this speaks of how God's going to take care of Israel, how God Almighty is looking to his bride to be on his side, and also to how Jesus is coming back soon. Guys, I am super excited about this. And when I say I'm excited, I mean, I, I'm actually a little bit out of my tree. And I know that probably gets on some people's nerves, but I, I tell you what, I just cannot get enough of it. Here's what I want to say to you. I want to say to you, Jesus is coming back soon. And before he does... God Almighty will rise up to defend Israel. For those of us that are worried about jihad taking place here, uh, I, I don't know why you would worry about that. Like, well, because it's dangerous. Oh, no, listen, we live in a very dangerous day. And our, our enemies are among us right now. If you haven't seen them protesting over the past few days, just turn on the television. They're actually celebrating the death of those babies and those women and those old people, they're celebrating it. And so they're saying, yay. And that's not happening in France, which it is. That's not happening in Germany, which it is. But it's happening right here in the United States of America. Like, okay, well, what do we do? Friends, we are not powerless. We are not. Because Jesus Christ is resurrected from the dead. Guys, he's literally speaking from the heavens today. Guys, we have, uh, I'm, I'm going to lead us all in prayer. and. Um, we're all going to pray and we're going to make a declaration. Are you guys ready? Father God, we just declare right now, wherever we're at on the planet Earth, here I am, sir, being overshadowed by this eclipse right now. We declare, God, that the ring of fire is this holy ring of fire is the answer to this unholy ring of fire. And that, Lord God, sir, that your word says that you will rise up, that you will be a wall of fire around her and that you will be the glory in the midst of her. God, you are the great defender of Israel and your covenant people all over the planet Earth. God, we, as your covenant people who have been grafted in, we just say, yes, Lord. Yes, King Jesus. We also want to say, come quickly, Lord. Come quickly. God, rout our enemies, Lord God, in Jesus' name. God, confuse our enemies, Lord, in Jesus' name. I pray, God, that the hostages would be found and brought home safely, Lord. Do great and mighty miracles, Lord God. Jesus, we recognize, sir, that you are the Lord who sits in the heavens and that you laugh at the enemies of Israel and your covenant people. Father God, sir, we're just mere human beings, God. But God, through you, we are called the sons of God. And God, we rejoice and being a part of your kingdom and getting to set at your table. We pray, God, for Israel. And we pray, God, that you would bless Israel. And we pray, God, that you would bless your people who are praying for Israel today. Jesus, I love you, Lord. And I praise you and thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, whenever this next big eclipse takes place on April the, April the 8th, it's Passover. It begins a new seven-year cycle, which actually this one actually begins it. But the Lord's confirming this one. He's given a double witness 
And if you're not sure that this begins another seven year cycle for us, that will probably look way different than the last seven year cycle, not in terms of provision, not in terms of God blessing you, not in terms of God giving you a way to walk. I mean, didn't he do that for you through COVID? Didn't he provide for you when the world went crazy? Oh, well, listen, he's still going to provide for you. I promise you. And he's still going to show you. He's going to give you strategies and plans just like Joseph. But if you're not sure that this is a sign from heaven, just simply look at the date of the next great eclipse. It is 4-8. And then look at Exodus 4-8. Do you know what Exodus 4-8 says? It literally says, it's when God is talking to Moses and he said this, if they don't believe the first sign, they will believe the second. Exodus 4-8. Hmm. Friends, the heavens declare the glory of God. The firm that shows his handiwork day in the day at utter speech, not in the night, it reveals knowledge. Guys, I would like to, to just bless you and say this. Do not be afraid. I also want to bless you wherever you're at and tell you, if you want to hear all of this prophetic word, and I'm actually going to be preaching for three nights in a row on all the prophetic words that I have for 5784, for the year 2024, and for how the heavens are declaring the word of God. Uh, guys, I encourage you guys to come see me at the New Beginnings Conference. And if you can't come and see me personally, you can actually view it online. Your tickets are good for either view, joining us as we get together and cry out to God and look at all the prophetic words and what God is speaking today. Or you can also, your ticket is also good for online as well. Friends, I'm going to be doing Star Party in the midst of that. And we're going to be showing this all on the screens. Uh, I'm going to be in Seattle, Washington very soon at the Seattle Revival Center in the month of November. And we're having a big star party there. We're going to be going through how the heavens declare the glory of God. This language is God's love language for those people who love him. And it's also his language of a promise, certain judgment, if you do not. Uh, right now, it's starting to get pretty dark outside. And this is not something that you can ignore when the sun starts to dim. It's pretty daggum crazy. I think that we have a shot out there. Ben, is that, does that shot work? Can you see anything on it? Not really. You mostly just see the window. No, that's okay. It's okay, buddy. All right, guys. Well, man, I'm excited. I'm going to be at Open Door Church tomorrow. I encourage you guys to come out and join me or join me live online at ODX. And uh, keep looking up. We have all these valuable resources. If you want to know about our resources, uh, we got these great calendars, and it is a Gregorian calendar, and it is also the Hebrew calendar overlaid on top of each other. One's called the Midnight Hour. The other one's called the Year of the Open Door. Hallelujah, 5784. And we have all those resources available at odx.tv. And we also have all of my looking up resources we have as well. And it's, it's just so much, guys. There's just so much, guys. We've been working on this for years and years and years. And um, we, I'm, I tell you, if you want to learn this stuff, you can. And it's not as hard as you think. I'm telling you, it'll set you on fire. And you won't even be able to walk outside in the daytime or the nighttime without seeing what God Almighty is declaring in the heavens. It's so much fun. I, it just it encourages me more than I can say. Also, last Sunday, it, uh, last Sunday, I preached a message that was called The Case for Calendars. And I was talking about timelines and having to know the timing, the prophetic timing of things. Listen, it's a free resource. Just go to odx.tv and actually watch that message. If this is new to you, just go and watch my message on my prophetic word for the year 5784 or look look up the sermon that's called The Case for Calendars. I preached both of those last Sunday and uh, they're available and all you got to do is go online and watch it. If you're on YouTube, I believe that you can find it there on YouTube as well. And uh, you look up those things. Now on odx.tv, all of my notes are there. You can literally click a button and you can download all of my sermon notes. And again, it's all free. And whenever we do have a ticket price or a price for a resource or something like that, it's because we save boys and girls out of sexual trafficking all over the planet Earth. And guys, we've been doing this for 28 years and we're really good at it. As we've rescued over 10 thousand boys and girls and we have over four thousand kids under our care not only do we rescue them but guys we raise them and we stay committed to them for decades and decades and decades just love them so much all that information is at odx.tv all right i think that's about it except for to say to all of my all of my uh friends that are that are third stage partners man i want to i want to tell you guys i'm fixing to do something here beside um, behind the scenes that is exclusive for you be looking for it. 
Uh, I'll be joining you in about 15 minutes at straight up 12 o'clock. And uh, if you're a third stage viewer at ODX.TV, I'm going to tell you all the behind the scenes stuff that we're working on, including our rescuers from all over the world, X Delta Force, uh, SEAL Team 6 guys that help me rescue kids all over the world and also run our security all over the planet. They're there with boots on the ground right now working on rescues. Wait till you hear it. You're going to be so excited. All right, guys. I love you all so much. I hope to see you at Open Door Church. Yes, Ben? We've had over 3,000 people on YouTube. Give them all a shout out. Hey, we have over 3,000. We've had over 3,000 people on YouTube. Hello, YouTube. I call you guys blessed and I love you guys. Thank you for joining me here at the barn at, at uh, Third Stage Ranch in Glen Rose, Texas. That's outstanding. All right, guys. Until the next time I see you, I call you the head and not the tail. You are above and you are not beneath and you are indeed highly favored of the Lord.